So you're thinking of buying a Land Rover Defender? Here's everything you'll need to know so you don't land yourself with a lemon. So as my regular subscribers do know, uh, we have a fully fitted Land Rover workshop, um, but I appreciate that you can't take a Land Rover Defender that you're potentially viewing to a workshop to go and have it inspected. So we've chosen to do it out the back of our yard here with one of our shock drops, which is a Land Rover Defender 110. So there's a few obvious things when you're going to view any vehicle, not just a Land Rover Defender. You wanna make sure that you've got enough light and enough space around the vehicle. Make sure the thing isn't parked in a puddle or it's not dark. If you buy something in the dark in the rain, you can almost guarantee it's gonna be a lemon. So you wanna make sure you've got a nice bright day, it's not windy too much, you know, you've got enough time to look over this vehicle. I usually spend about 45 minutes to an hour looking over any vehicle I purchase, just to make sure that I know exactly what I'm buying. And I've put together a little list, just of general stuff that we check over, and obviously this vehicle is specific to a Land Rover Defender. So I've written up a list which will be very handy to you guys um, in buying a Land Rover Defender, and this is exactly what I look for, and this is just a general guide, you know, this isn't belt and braces, because I can't go at it with tools and stuff and start prying, prying all the bushes and stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff that you can see on a Defender is visual anyway. So you should get a great idea if this thing is worth buying or if you should leave this one and walk away. Key points to note, rust. If you're thinking of buying a Land Rover Defender, you should be very aware of rust. On these heavily analog cars, it is a complete car killer. You know, this thing is sitting on a ladder chassis. It's got an aluminium body. Just make sure you don't buy one that's super rusty. And that's the first thing we're going to talk about when we're looking over this vehicle. We want to make sure that we're not buying a total rust bucket because it doesn't matter how much money you pour into it, um, it will cost you thousands if you've got to completely restore the whole thing, put a new frame into it, new chassis. You know, don't buy a rust bucket. You'll save yourself so much time and hassle and you end up with just with a nicer car. When I'm checking over any vehicle, I always start at the front axle. That's just me. I'm not saying that that is exactly what you guys should be doing. I just start right at the front. I have a good look at the body gappings, the panelling. Just get a general feel for the vehicle. How does it look? How's it sitting? You know, how's the spring height? Stuff like that. You can see straight away this vehicle has had a new radiator. And by the way, guys, I haven't actually checked this vehicle over. Um, I spoke to the seller in depth about it and I picked this thing up off of a good word and we've been using it for a couple of months now and no problems, engine oil is nice and clean, but I haven't actually crawled underneath it or put it on a lift and you guys will see it later on in the channel. But um, again, we're gonna look over this together and this is my first time really looking over this vehicle and seeing what we bought. Um, but straight at the front here, I can see that this vehicle has got a, a new radiator and you can see the, the fins here, nice and clean, everything's nice and new. The intercooler is not new but it doesn't look too bad. That's absolutely fine, no problem at all. It's an easy fix. There's a bit of rust on the bumper. Again, bumpers are nice and cheap and easy. But like I said, first thing we'll be starting with is the frame or the chassis. So the chassis you can see right here, these are the front, the front outriggers or the, or the dub irons on the chassis. And this is a frame plug. So this is where you put in a high lift jack. If you can, if the owner doesn't mind, pull off the frame plug. And you can sort of see straight in there, look, there is a drain hole in there, but you can see it's full of mud. So that's never ideal, but Looking at the side of it, it's not going to be a car killer. This, this chassis looks pretty good in general. You know, these are utility vehicles. It's a Defender at the end of the day. You can't expect, you're not going to view a Rolls Royce. Pop that back in. Now, as I said, you're going to need, a, we're going to be crawling on the floor here. So get yourself an old jacket, something you can crawl around with and have a good look. Grab your torch and we'll get going. So, as I said, I always start at the front axle. And immediately I can see here, we've got a new steering damper. That's always great, you know, and that looks relatively new, so I'd assume this car has been recently maintained or has been maintained. You see a lot of them rusty. Strictly speaking about the chassis, you know, check underneath here, make sure the actual chassis, there's no massive holes in it or anything. It looks pretty neat and tidy here. You get a general idea straight away. Um, you know, there's nothing hanging off. There's a bit of the factory paint coming off. I'm not too concerned about that. You can also see here, the radius arm bushes. You wanna pay attention to these. The bushes are hanging out, or it looks a bit odd, you know, that's probably, probably needs doing. Not a deal breaker, but just have an idea that, you know, that might need servicing or something like that. One thing I always look for is the power steering. So the power steering box is here, and they always like to leak out of the nose. Uh, this one isn't leaking, which is great, and the drop arm, these gators always split. Again, this is not, this is not a real problem here, but um, this one is in good condition. These are usually hanging off, um, or this gate is missing altogether. So this is the chassis. You know, all of this, this is all looking in great condition, which is perfect. You want to make sure that these aren't rusty, there's no holes in it or anything like that, and you get a general idea straight away of the car with things like the, the chassis seams. 
you know, areas like this is where there's going to be rust building up and it's going to start to eat the chassis from the inside out. Another point, the whole general front axle. Most defenders have a leaking seal on the swivels, not a massive problem, and don't be put off by this. So when you're underneath the engine, you just want to make sure that this thing is not absolutely pissing out oil. If it looks generally dry, it's probably in good condition and has been serviced. You find that ones that are leaking too much are just just haven't really been maintained to the standard we need. Again, looking over the chassis, all of this looks to be in great order, which is absolutely perfect. But, you know, this is quite common on the Defender as well because the engine sits up here and they usually leak oil a little bit. Now, common areas for the Defender where they're going to rust is going to be around the footwells. So the bottom of the footwells here, this is where you want to pay close attention. Right underneath the footwells there, that is the bottom of your footwells. And you can see this vehicle is starting to rust along here. So this will need actioning, repairing, or protecting, but that is quite an expensive repair, so you want to make sure that uh, that is kept to a minimum, if any at all. Later ones you shouldn't really have an issue, but the early ones certainly this is a massive, massive issue. And also in that same area, you can see actually what's happening is this is the bottom of the footwell here, and then you've got the chassis outrigger. Now mud tends to sit right on the top there, and it will just eat away at the chassis and the footwell until there's nothing left. So you know, this will be a sign that the vehicle hasn't been cleaned or hasn't been maintained or serviced. So make sure that the footwells are intact, they're not rotten, and all of this looks to be in good structural rigidity. Make sure it looks okay. This actually looks like it's had a new, I can see some welding here. So this one has been replaced, which is not a problem. It, you know, it has been maintained, which is fine. And again, you can repair these things to no end, but you just wanna make sure that you're getting the best version of a Defender as possible for your money. So at the front axle here, you want to just inspect the core springs. These look quite old and rusty, but a relatively simple thing to replace. But it's nice to see that it's got new flexi brake lines, new calipers, new ball joints. Obviously, this vehicle has been maintained. And when I say new stuff, it's quite obviously new, isn't it? It's shiny. So shiny stuff means it's been maintained. Apart from them, these are standard. But that's been replaced, that's been replaced. It's been maintained, which is a great sign for any Defender. And it's obviously been done by a competent mechanic because everything looks in order, nothing looks chewed up. Moving back... On any Defender you'll be faced with your gearbox and your transfer box. Now transfer box, transfer boxes love to leak and they always leak from the IMS shaft. So this will give you an idea of how much work the Defender has done. If this thing is a huge oily mess, it's been pulling a lot of weight, which means that the vehicle's gone through a lot of wear. If it's been pulling a lot of weight, that means that all the other components on the engine are gonna be pretty shagged. So you wanna make sure that this is relatively clean. This all looks pretty good. It's not caked in mud, it's still silver. That's great, and this is a 30 year old vehicle, so that's pretty good. From up here, you can see the body. You can see where, again, this is another, another sign on defenders. The middle cross member where they mount to the body. You can see the, the floor pan, and this is literally the center seat here or a center cubby box if, if yours has got one. So all the flooring around here, it, does, it looks relatively clean. It's not rotten, and you can see where the two, the aluminum and the mild steel, they're not best of friends. So you can see here where they start to react. And on a really bad Defender, that will be missing where it's just completely corroded away. So just have a good look around the floor pan where the body connects to the chassis. And again, on top of the chassis, make sure it's not full of mud. All of this chassis looks pretty straight and true and nice and solid. So don't be afraid to give it a good tap with the back of your hand. You'll know if it's crunchy or crispy. Uh, that's going to be uh, a bit of a problem, especially if you put your thumb through someone else's car. So moving back here, we've got the rear prop. Again, these are just universal joints. They're pretty simple to replace, but just have an eye, have a good look over everything. This chassis is looking really nice and healthy. And this car, I could almost tell immediately because the body was nice and straight. It wasn't full of filler. It hadn't been resprayed. It hadn't been modified. Uh, modified defenders are fine, as long as it's been done by somebody competent. I would always suggest buying a completely bone stock standard Defender that's been unmolested and then you can have some fun with just making sure that once all the mechanicals are done you can have some fun with all the stuff on top. But we see so many Defenders come through the workshop, they've been resprayed, they've got a black roof, this and that, and underneath it's just a total nightmare. So make sure you do crawl around this thing and make sure you're not getting ripped off essentially. But under here everything is looking nice and square. For a 30 year old vehicle this is in exceptional condition. Everything looks great, this is a perfect base for a project and there's really not much work to be done apart from preventative maintenance which is exactly what we want to see. The floor pan's looking nice and dry, there's no scabs or holes or anything in the body, it actually looks watertight and to be, to be fair if someone said underneath how old is this vehicle I'd say under 20 years. And this is a real hot spot for rust and a bit of a pain to weld on a new one because it's you, ideally you want access from the top to do a proper job on this thing. So you want to make sure that these bolts aren't totally rotten. Make sure that there's no mud sitting on top. Make sure there's no holes in the thing. This one looks pretty good, although it is showing signs of rusting. But that's absolutely fine. Coming to the rear, this is a Salisbury rear axle. Um, 
if you've got a rover axle or a Salisbury axle, this applies. Pinion seal's leaking on this. Relatively straightforward repair. Don't be shying away from that. But obviously, you can chip some money off of the buyer if this is leaking or you find any maintenance that needs doing. Um, we can get, we potentially might be able to get some money off of when we purchase this vehicle if we say that a repair needs to be carried out. The rear differential, it holds the oil and some is leaking out. Another thing to note on these defenders is the bushes. Now, the rear trailing arm bushes, uh, on an older one, or one that's worked very hard, this one has been replaced as of, as of the other side. Uh, these will be cracked, split, and very obviously worn. And this will lead the rear axle to be wobbling and swaying and just give it quite an unsettling feel behind the wheel. You won't really feel like you're in control. If that ever works with a Defender, they do feel quite out of control at the best of times. Uh, another new brake line back here. That's very nice to see. This thing has been maintained, which is great. So we'll go around to the rear now. Another point to note is the rear outriggers on the chassis. Again, we're most concerned about the bulkhead and the chassis with this thing. Everything else is relatively straightforward, but if you get one with a, a dud chassis and a rotten bulkhead, you'll be spending thousands trying to rectify this. So a point to check, which is very common, is where the outrigger bolts to the actual body itself. Now there's so many defenders that have this whole section missing because it's been there for years, it's got mud traps all over it and they just rot away and then you're left with having footing the bill to repair it all. Key, key area on these defenders is the rear cross member. Now this one has obviously been replaced because you can see a welded seam here. So this has been replaced and it's so common on these that this is quite an often, this is, this is a, a very normal sight. I don't mind buying one that's had a cross member changed as long as it's been done properly. Mud gets flicked up from the rear wheels. It sits in the back of the cross member and rots the whole of the rear chassis to pieces. It's a relatively savage repair to do. You've got to drop the fuel tank down, cut the back of the chassis, cut the wiring, weld on a good quality unit. This one looks like a good quality unit and it's been done some time ago. Um, no problems with that repair. It looks absolutely fine. And don't be afraid if you know the one you're looking at you find has had a cross member repair. Very, very common. Again, so, so this is the back of the chassis. This is the cross member that has been replaced. And I assume it's because it was obviously used on a farm or something like that. It's filled with mud and it's rotten. And it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's rotted out essentially. So they have replaced it and it looks like it's been done for some time. And it's been a quality repair. Another point to note is look in the wheel wells. And on an earlier vehicle, these liners will be made of metal. They might rot out again around the nuts and bolts. These turrets, your suspension top turrets, this is where the shock absorber will run inside in here and the back of them likes to hold mud and rot out. This is nice and solid, looks good. Now generally, that is most of the underneath are looked over. You should be able to find out if that vehicle is a lemon with just the underneath. You see so many vehicles that have been painted, they've got carpets and carpets hide a multitude of sins. And we'll jump into the interior now and show you what I mean. When you check the doors for rust as well, you can open this. Another thing to do is grab hold of the door, lift it up. You see that hinge needs replacing. And that stops the door latching properly. So it doesn't latch. If I lift it up, it will close properly. This is an old vehicle. It's not a deal breaker. I can change that hinge. But I want to make sure that the bottom of the door has been repaired or they're not hiding anything because these like to rot out quite a lot. This one obviously looks like it had some work. Now that could be filler, it looks like filler actually, so that's what you don't want to see. So we might have to repair that at a later date once we pull off the door card and see if that repair is unsatisfactory. So straight away on the inside of the interior, first, where you want to, first place you want to look is on the inside here. Now these seat box corners like to really rot out. This one looks absolutely perfect, which is a really, really good sign. I've got a number of other defenders where this is totally split, separated, and you can, you can see the floor through there. That is a great sign and a great indication that this vehicle's been regularly cleaned. You know, just regularly cleaning would be half the battle here with these things, because it'll stop them rusting out with all the mud, etc. If it's got carpet all glued over it, uh, it could be hiding something. And again, you can't really rip off their carpet and have a look, but just be aware that it could be an underlying issue. Again, with the mats, it's nice seeing such a basic one because you can lift it all up and have a look and see the floor pans. They're there, which is great. That's all you can ask for, really. Everything looks pretty, pretty, I mean, on a vehicle like this, you might be able to move it. I won't bother. You get the idea. 
It is slightly damp in here, but this has got no kind of uh, insulate or anything. So I fully expect that wet boots. This is obviously a farmer's vehicle or something. Again, you can see access to the bulkhead here. Looking really nice. There's a little bit of rust around here, but nothing really to worry about. A great point to note about buying any vehicle um, is how does the interior smell? You know, you can tell if the vehicle has been wet, somebody smoked in it, just by the general smell of the vehicle and just by the general look over the vehicle, who's owned it? You know, you can, you can just tell how the vehicle has been maintained by the owner or who's been spending most of the time in, in the driver's seat. On the interior, these panels here, this whole binnacle is very fra frail and brittle because of all the sunlight, this plastic becomes very brittle and these are typically repaired or glued or hanging off so they typically crack along there. You can replace them with metal ones but again, if we don't have to spend the money, we won't. So this is looking nice and good. Um, everything looks pretty straightforward. This is a very basic interior and there's not much to look at in that sense. So round on the inside here, On the inside here, next to the dash, is another rust spot in between the, the, the uh, windscreen frame and the top of the bulkhead. Looking nice and square down there. Nobody's tried to spray any black paint to try and hide anything. And uh, black paint will cover a multitude of sins. Do have a look over all this kind of stuff. Looks nice and healthy. No welding repairs to the inside there. All looking very nice. Headliner in this, very common in any Defender to be sagging and they drop down. Plenty of replacements and again, that's not a problem. You've got to expect some kind of, you know, some repairs and bits and bobs you're going to have to do to a Defender. Um, but pretty good. This, this interior is nice and straight and square. Um, you can go to the extent of pulling up the seats and looking at the fuse board and looking at the battery tray and all of that. Um, but generally, you should just get a good guide of what we're talking about here by these pretty basic checks. Let's go around to the rear of the vehicle. Now, this is obviously a high capacity. Now, generally, this applies to any Defender. You just want to check the floor out. Make sure it's not rotten. Make sure it's not rusty. In a high cap, I expect it to be dented, beaten and battered because nobody bought these to be uh, driving around London. So, um, yeah, as long as it's got no holes, no, no obvious signs of rot, rust, anything that's hiding or anything that's, you know, uh, suspicious, sweet. Next one is, we're going to go under the bonnet. Now, don't be daunted if you're not mechanically minded. Looking over an engine is actually pretty straightforward. Um, I don't like opening an engine bay and seeing that the owner has pressure washed it, cleaned it, and put all that shiny stuff all over all the plastics. Um, I like to see a dusty engine bay, personally. A dusty engine bay shows me exactly the engine. If there's any leaks, I can see down the dust path that there's an oil leak from that particular component. If someone's pressure washed it, cleaned everything, I can't really see anything. And so that's a, a minor red flag. I appreciate some people want to, you know, be a, they want to present the vehicle in the best light. So wash over that if the rest of the vehicle looks good, but it's a, it's a small red flag for me if someone's been in here and polishing bits and bobs, it could be a sign that someone's tried to hide something. Engine this is pretty simple, as in most offenders, there's not much to look at, but obviously there's, this is dry, great. Just make sure that all of it is dry. It's nice and simple to look at. As long as it runs and it's okay, check the levels, your coolant's in here, make sure it's actually got coolant, there's some water there, that's a good sign. Um, you can go as far as smelling it and running it and all that, but you should have a great idea just, just by looking over it already. Check the oil filler cap. Give it a smell. It doesn't smell crusty and burnt or anything. There's nothing notable under there. Great. But I can tell you straight away, just because the engine is dry, um, that it's been well maintained. If an engine runs out of oil because it hasn't been serviced, i.e. it's burnt the oil, it will get too hot, all the gaskets will get hot, they'll fail, and it will start leaking, and then somebody's potentially poured some oil in pre-sale, and you've got this horrible leaky mess to, to rectify after. A great point in here with the engine on defenders is you can look at the footwells. This is the footwell here. You can actually see that's where your feet would sit. And uh, these are very common to rust. This is the whole of your bulkhead here, all of this behind, and this is the same one at any defender. It'll just have a potentially different engine or different variant, but that is the bulkhead. Pay close attention to the bulkhead, and I'm even down here, you can see what I mean. The water's trapped down there. The water's trapped down there, and we've got a bit of rust creeping in that might need to be actioned. So we have got a small leak here on this side of the engine. You can just see the side of the engine block is wet there. I don't think there's anything really too big to worry about. You are buying a used vehicle, and so that you are going to find some bits and bobs if you're pulling it to pieces on an inspection like this. Don't be afraid if you see little leaks and bits and bobs like this, because it might be a bargaining tool when you come to make the seller an offer. You want to leave the bonnet up here, start the engine, and just listen for anything. So 
So you should be able to have a good idea of how the engine sounds. I appreciate if you're not mechanically minded, you might not know what to listen for, but if anything sounds obviously knocking, banging, you could hear that squeaking from that tensioner. Um, again, that is a very minor issue, especially on these 300 TDIs. Um, it's that front, front belt tension. I'm not concerned about that, but I can hear the engine over that noise and the engine is absolutely sweet on this. Another sign on this is uh, make sure you do check the engine oil level. And this is such a good engine, this you can see because the engine oil is almost trans, you know, translucent, it's almost clear, which is almost unheard of on a diesel. They're always black. So this has obviously been well maintained, which is a wonderful sign. And it's all original. There's no weird hoses or any odd wiring that's going on here. Just check over, make sure there's nothing additionally added. You usually find some red wiring that's been, somebody's put something in at some point, then they've cut it off and you don't want those kind of stories. You don't want that kind of hassle. Now, one trap that most people fall into is they buy a Defender that looks cool. And when I say that, people ring me and say, it's been resprayed. And to me, that's a massive red flag because it could be full of filler and it could be, they could be covering it up. You could have bought an old farm truck that someone's painted black, stuffed some LEDs on, on some wheels, sent it out the door for 30 odd grand or whatever. And then you're lumbered with this lemon that's been painted. And in about two or three years time, it just won't look as good. Nice and easy checks to make sure if your vehicle is full of filler. These are very easy straight panels to see. You can see if anything has been messed around with here. And this thing is straight as an arrow. All the paint looks commensurate with the age. It's all a matte blue. I'm sure if I shine it up, it would come up like a glossy blue. But I can see that straight away, every single panel is original to this car. And you can just tell straight away because one door is not obviously glossy. Um, and the dents are you know, commensurate with the age. This is all the same. The tub's been, this is all from new. Everything is new and that is a great sign to me. It's had five new tyres fitted, which is wonderful. So you do want to make sure that you, you carry out a test drive on these vehicles. Um, you want to make sure that it, it does operate, it runs and drives, check, run through the gears, make sure, get up to some reasonable speed, test the brakes, check the operation of the park brake and make sure it feels okay behind the wheel. And again, just confirm that potentially this car is for you. Again, I, I go back to that gut feeling. Is this really going to be my car? And you should almost know straight away, as I said, um, almost immediately, but this is just a gem generic guide just so you don't land yourself with something underneath that you weren't quite sure of. Once you're happy with the car, you want to ask the owner for the service history, if any at all provided, all the paperwork, the books, the manuals, and you want to make sure that the numbers match. One thing to note, whilst you're under the bonnet, you want to make sure defenders are stolen quite frequently, which is really sad. You want to make sure that you check the VIN tag. Now this is the vehicle's identification plate, and you want to make sure that this number on the top matches the number which is in the windscreen. And of course, you want to make sure that that number marries up to any paperwork which the seller has provided. There's also a free government tool. Um, you can type in the number plate. If you type in MOT history check, and it will bring up the whole vehicle's MOT history, any previous fails, and then you can see any mileage discrepancies, anything odd, you know, the vehicle suddenly failed and then it passed in a day without anything being done. Um, that's always a big red flag. So all these tools are free and all these bits and bobs are uh, nice and easy checks to do for anyone really. Now, if you are satisfied with everything you've seen and everything that I've described to you in this list, then do go ahead and make the seller an offer. You might get some money off with some of the bits that we've identified and uh, you might end up with a car that will be with you for years to come. Now, if you do find something which does look scary, like a rotten chassis or a rotten bulkhead, just walk away, unless it's super cheap and you're prepared to go through that process of repairing it or paying somebody else to do so. Um, if you do find something, you know, make sure that you're in love with this vehicle and that you're, you're, paying, you're paying the right price for the right car uh, and make sure that no one's trying to hide anything um, you know, with any filler or paintwork or anything and satin black kind of stuff like that. Um, Make sure it's a good one because it's going to last you years to come if you make sure that you buy a decent car. Now, of course, guys, this guide is just a general guide and it's just to stop you guys buying a lemon. This is just a general process of looking over the vehicle to make sure that you don't end up with something which is just going to cost you a fortune to repair. Um, please do your own checks, your own research and take somebody else if you're unsure of what to look for. So guys, if you found this video helpful, please do let me know in the comment section below. Do hit subscribe, give us a follow on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors, and we'll see you guys for the next video.